simple stuff first okay fine um hello and uh, you know welcome welcome uh, to you both for the uh, vector space linear algebra course um so as you know we'll you know we'll meet on fridays uh, 10 to 12 um and i'll get the uh, meet link you know thing uh, uh, sorted uh, before we meet uh, uh, on 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 the next friday all right and um, um so i'll 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 see you know uh, with the whether to shift to google meet itself or we can or we can go back to the um, google, uh, teams uh, meeting all right anyway so uh, so yeah so so uh, welcome to the course and this is, these are of you know uh, back uh, the uh, uh, the topics which i'll be covering so here so 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 basically the idea is that uh, because this field uh, you know this field is very abstracted out what happens is you have a lot of applications <laughs> that you can look at uh, you know uh, based upon where your where your field of research or 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 work is right so for example let's say uh, we'll see th throughout this course that we can actually look at functions and vectors and matrices all under the same banner of vector spaces right which is which is a powerful idea idea in itself right because then you are able to abstract out a lot of the features that you need in a uh, in in these particular uh, spaces and then basically use the theorems which have been proved in this particular uh, uh, abstracted out field and apply it on your um, required uh, you know use case uh, so i learned my um, uh, in algebra from uh, my professor guhan thope last last year and um, so i i i would try to emulate you know how he taught and 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 and, and see you know what is best uh, for, for the lectures going forward uh, so we'll be using the book linear algebra by hoffman and kunze so you might see like there is almost a one to one mapping between you know uh, what what the uh, topics are mentioned here and the topics mentioned in the book uh, so we'll we'll follow it almost um, Uh, 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 in the same format, and we'll also solve problems uh, regarding uh, which are present in this book itself. Okay, um, okay. So with that, we'll start the um, lecture. Uh, sufficiently late. Okay. Uh, so uh, so first, I wanted to give you you know why uh, do, should you study something like vector spaces, right? So I, I I'll do that using uh, two theorems that are very simple enough to prove. So the first theorem states that you know uh, the a linear combination. of a linear combination of vectors in rn is a linear combination of these vectors in rn okay so rn is basically in your n dimensional space right um so so for example so, so that's your uh, you know in three dimensional space that would be a 3d vector in two dimensional space it's your just a point or whatever right here it's again a point in some space and stuff like that so the idea is that um so i, I just try to break down this uh, statement into simpler parts a linear combination of a linear combination of vectors so i have a linear combination of vectors already with me right and i'm taking a linear combination of these vectors right which is uh, mentioned here is again a linear combination of these vectors in r bar n of these vectors means these original vectors okay so we'll come to exact definitions of linear combination but for now i'll uh, just introduce you you know exactly what it means so okay so, so let's say i have a vectors v1 to vn in let's say in r bar n okay um so i have some n vectors that is n points in some sense in this r r n space right and i will define some m vectors like this which is c11 some constant c11 into this particular vector v1 right so if i have v1 v2 let's say as some vectors like this right some elements here in the r power n space is n cross 1 vectors right and i am multiplying each of these elements with c11 this one with c12 and adding them up so vector addition is basically just adding up corresponding elements in the same dimension right so when i do this i actually get another vector which is what i mentioned about this u1 here now similarly i can uh, construct another vector u2 by taking some other constants and so on so let's assume that there are some m vectors i, I construct using some cons using some you know uh constants c11 to c mn sort of uh constants here okay so uh, now what i'm saying is so these vectors u1 u2 um are already linear combination of these vectors right v1 to vn so this is by definition we say that if if a vector is a linear combination of some vectors we say that okay i can find i, I can find I, i i have some uh you know uh constant c1 and so on which i can find to to see that this particular sum turns out to be my given vector 
again don't worry about the exact definition you will come to it properly rigorously will will define what it means and stuff like that okay um so so then we have so so, so now, now what i will do i will say i will consider a linear combination of these vectors okay which is what the definition which is what the theorem says so a linear combination of the linear combination of vectors so u1 to um are linear combination of v1 to vn and their linear combination i'm taking okay so let's say some constants alpha 1 to alpha m and so on now with simple algebra i can show that w is also a linear combination of the original vectors that i have v1 to vn right which is what the theorem is saying right very straightforward proof right uh, i have linear combination of vectors if i take the linear combination what vector i get is again a linear combination of the original vectors in the first place okay so this is fine again a straightforward thought process fine Next, let's say I, I, I have another theorem in, for example, space of functions. So if you see here, uh, a linear combination of a linear combination of functions from 0, 1 to R. So therefore, I have some functions f, right, which is going from, which takes elements from 0, 1 and projects it onto R. Okay. So let's say I have this. Um, huh. So so I'm saying that a linear combination of these functions is a linear combination of these functions again, right? So let's say I have from f, some f1 to fn be functions from so and so I'm constructing some uh, you know functions g1 using some constant c1 and stuff like that and and so so now the question is how do you define you know uh, 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 multiplication of uh, you know uh, functions and a constant and all of that so again we'll discuss all of that also very rigorously but here just try to understand that if I define a function like this what I'm actually meaning is that for every x I, whatever output I want for g1 of x, it's actually just the output of these particular functions f1 to fn of x multiplied by the respective constants. Okay, and uh, same thing I can do here. I can see that you know uh, I will uh, I, I can define g2 to gm some other functions like this, and again I take a linear combination of these um, you know functions g1 to gm as h again so with some constants alpha, right? And with simple algebra I can show that it is again a linear combination of these original functions right now if you think about it what have we done in these two theorems right we have done the exact same thing <laughs> right we have taken some uh, objects like uh, f1 to fn here here i've taken uh, vectors in rn and i've done the exact same proof twice this is, this is basically just a wastage in some sense right or, or this also tells us that there is something common between these two sort of um, stuff that your vectors and your functions is something common that I can actually sort of look at at a more abstract level and try to you know prove at that level and then I can just you know say that okay uh, this is this is true for all the for, for vectors and for functions so this is basically uh, what we have the idea of vector spaces so vector spaces in some sense provide an abstraction right provide an abstraction of some layer in which we can prove some theorems and then apply those theorems to to the specialized uh, objects right right in this case our specialized objects in some sense are your either vectors in rn right r power n space or basically some functions Okay, so now we'll uh, look at some fundamental items uh, to understand, uh, you know, the, the the formal definitions of what vector spaces are and, and how do you work with them. And hence we move on to the first topic of the lecture, the uh, first topic of, of this course, that is abelian groups and fields. Uh, any doubts until now? No, sir. Okay. But, sir, yeah. should I make notes? at this moment or will i get uh, something uh, no no so uh, i'll provide the recording and also the pdf of whatever is being written here um in the course uh, contents module that, that you will get from the i i triple s platform and there you can you know refer it refer to it yes sir. thank you okay. good okay um so okay so we will come to something called as the abelian group uh, so what is the abelian group is basically um, a, a set G, right? Uh, there's some set G of some, uh, you know, items in G together with a binary operation. 
so a binary operation basically takes this uh, so we, we, we represent the binary operation with the symbol star and what it does is it takes two elements of g and applies this operation on them and produces an element back in g okay so one simple example if you want to think about uh, binary binary operation could be for example addition very simple right and let's say if i take two real numbers let's say 2.3 plus 5.6 I will get 7.9 right so this is so, so, so the set g basically i'm saying is the set of reals right real number line and the operation plus is defined in this way right this is the binary operation so what i'm doing is i'm taking two elements of g and what i'm get what i get as a result of applying this binary operation on these two elements is also a, an element in g which is a real number which is fine right so this is this is uh, the idea of this binary operation okay uh, so we are saying that okay this set and this binary operation it, it's it's one uh, you know uh, um, a combination i'm taking but if it follows some properties then i can say that this particular set and this operation this this whole um, you know um, this g comma star tuple i will now call it as an abelian group if it follows some properties what properties are those right so the first thing is associativity that is for all elements a b c belonging to this group g i can uh, if i can uh, you know do this a star b star c is equal to a star b star c right again uh, this should be very familiar for you in terms of you know normal um, mathemat normal multiplication or addition stuff like that right so basically uh, what does it mean right it means that let's say if i if, see because see star is a binary operation so it can take only two elements at once. So when I take these two elements A and B, uh, let's say it produces some uh, value called E. Now again, I apply this star on this E and C, and let's say it, it provides me some um, element F, right? Now I apply uh, this star operation on B and C, let's say it gives me something called H, and let's say then I apply the star operation on A and H, let's say it gives me something called I. So what I'm saying is anything I choose, I choose any A, B, C, this F will always be equal to I for all A, B, C. Any A, B, C I choose, if I do this if I do these operations in this particular order, always the result I get from the left hand side will be equal to the result on the right hand side. Now this should be very familiar for you in terms of multiplication and, and, and additions, right? Because um, we have that associativity rule. So A plus B plus C, is equal to a plus b plus c right in this in, in in the same spirit we have this thing called associativity okay that is one second thing come let, let's talk about identity identity means there is there exists some element e which belongs to this set g such that for all a in g i can i get this result that is if i apply the operation on e and a or if i apply the operation on a and d right because let's say if you have some uh, uh, operation where the order matters right even if i exchange the order when i'm working with this uh, uh, element e i get the same result as a right so uh, can you think of uh, what uh, could be uh, the uh, identity in case of uh, addition sort of operations any idea if, if we take real numbers, then we can say 2 plus 3 and 3 plus 2. Is, is it M correct? Ah, no, no. See, mm. what are we saying? We're saying that there is some ex there is some element E in G such that if I take any element in G, if I do this operation, I should always get A. Right? So, A plus E, let's say, uh, I'm dealing with, let's say, plus symbol. Okay? Plus um, addition as your operation. And let's say I'm dealing, dealing with reals, for example. So what is the element E such that if I add A to E or if I add E to A, I'll always get A. What could be this E? Sorry? It will be zero. Correct. Zero. Right? Yes, sir. Yes. Hmm. Because A plus zero, as we know, and zero plus A is always A. That's it. Simple, right? So, so in case of your uh, addition, that is your uh, plus that is normal addition and your real numbers uh, space, this a plus zero and zero plus a is always a. 
so for any a this is for all a right and, and here a can be zero also again <laughs> because zero plus zero is zero right so this a can be any element in g including e i will always get something like this right this should be true for all elements in a for all for all elements in g okay this is the idea so basically uh, in this property we need to find out what this e is right for the particular operation for the particular set that we are choosing g what what can be the element e such that this operation this particular property holds true that is what we need to look for okay that's um, second property third property is the existence of inverse we are saying that for each a in uh, g there exists an element so there should be exactly one element which if i multiply uh, if i if i operate on b and a in any order by the way i should always get e okay so let's say in in case of real numbers right and plus again we will use the same uh, thought process so let's say if i have this addition and real numbers right what so let's say if i have a plus b that is b plus a should be equal to what was e we found it to be zero so what could be uh, uh, b right what could be this b any ideas it will be minus a minus a correct it will be minus a right and the thing is we are saying this b also has to belong to the set g okay so as we know real numbers have all your uh, you know positive negative all numbers right so therefore uh, this b also belongs to this uh, real numbers and it belongs to real numbers for all a so therefore um, you know this particular uh, uh, this r plus also has this inverse property b okay that is the third property fourth property is talking about commutivity Com uh, commutivity basically talks about if i have uh, if, if i take two elements a and b in g then the order in which i apply the binary operation should not matter that is um, a star b should be equal to b star a. okay so in case of plus and reals let's say okay what is uh, so, so so the idea is that i should be able to tell is a plus b equal to b plus a or not and which is true trivially right because this is the uh, law of addition in some sense right so uh, so clear about this commutativity uh, operation okay uh, so so now we we'll look at some some other uh, you know uh, examples of this uh, abelian group so, so so the idea is that given a set g given a binary operation you need to check whether these properties hold if they hold we call it as, as an abelian group right now let's look at uh, this idea z comma plus any any thought processes um, how you would go about you know doing this integer in plus operation correct so z is basically set of integers right yes set of integers and this is your normal addition right uh, normal since is you call it integral addition or whatever anyway so this is um, uh, the addition operation on on the set of integers right so your uh, the first property was for example you know if i add two elements in this i should get a integer again so this c a binary operation should basically satisfy this property first in the in the in, 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 in some sense and then i can look at these things right so the so basically if i do if i add two integers let's say z1 and z2 will i get another integer yes sir. yes right so this belongs to the uh, z set right and then for example let's say uh, the second uh, uh, pro so for first property is uh, associativity which we know that that addition is associated so this is fine and then let's come to identity so identity we just saw that you know for for addition Ideally, zero should be uh, zero will be the entity, and zero does belong to uh, the set of um, you know, Integer. uh, integers, right? So therefore, and and the, so zero is basically the e element of this uh, of this particular uh, group or the or particular algebraic structure, right? And then your inverse. So inverse in in terms of uh, plus would just be the negative of the. Uh, uh, you know of the of the integer for example if a is some integer belonging to z minus a also belongs to z because integers have 
plus uh, ne negative and positive numbers all together. So therefore the inverse also exists, right? And commutativity is just a uh, uh, result of uh, uh, the addition property addition uh, operation itself. So therefore we can say that this particular uh, you know uh, uh, group. I mean th th this particular uh, algebraic structure is a group uh, abelian group. Okay. The, the, so in this way, you, you you need to be able to prove whether a given this this set and an operation is it a abelian group or not, right? Okay. Um, so okay. So so then we we'll look at something like the, uh, so uh, another example we'll take and drive home the point you know of what we are trying to think about. So let's say um, I have this um, uh, set which is Q slash zero. Any idea what Q slash zero would mean? Rational number. Yes, rational number is Q. Correct. Slash zero is I'm not getting. Ha. So slash zero means basically take the all rational numbers but remove zero from it. That's what. Yes. Okay. So this is a set of rash. So this whole thing is set of a rational numbers minus the zero element. So no zero in this particular set. Okay. And I'm saying okay. Uh, and the operation is your normal multiplication. The scalar multiplication, right? Some multiplication. Now, if you have to prove that this is a group or not, um, what what all you need to do? Same steps, right? So first thing is you need to prove that uh, you need to say that if I multiply two rational numbers, do I get a rational number or not, right? So that you can do very simply. You can say p let's say let's say p p by so any rational number I can I can represent it as a p by q as a ratio of two integers, right? So I can say p by q is one rational number. Another rational number will be r by s, for example. I can write it as p r by q s. And I know p r is a rational number uh, integer. Q s is is an integer. So therefore, this also belongs to this particular set, right? That's the idea. That's the, <laughs> the way to prove this closure property. The, the first property which we said that. You know, if you multiply two uh, items, you should get the item in in that in the set again. That's one thing. Second thing we had is associativity, which is again a, a simple byproduct of. Uh, I mean, you can use the same same sort of uh, argument and and see whether uh, uh, because your uh, multiplication is actually associative, you will get this uh, same sort of a um, you know reasoning. Okay. Third thing was you know uh, uh, thinking about. Uh, Identity. So, what would be the identity in this particular um, uh, example? Would it be zero? No, sir. If we remove zero, right? I think I'm... it won't be right because identity element E should belong to the set G. Okay. So, zero is not an identity. Yes. Fine. So, zero cannot be identity because it's not it's not in the set at all. So, which is the what is the identity then? Any ideas? No, sir. I think we won't get zero otherwise if we don't have zero in. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, what is the uh, de definition of identity, right? So, let's say for all elements A, which belong to G, there exists an element E which belongs to G, right? Such that if I apply the binary operation A star E equals to E star A, I should get A again. Right. This is the idea. This is the yes. thing that we are trying yes. to uh, you know, mention. So, with that in mind, what is a uh, star here is just a multiplication, right? Yes. And let's say so. If a belongs to G, what is a? Then a is a rational number which is non-zero. So I can just write this rash this a as some p by q, right? Where p and q are integers, and this multiplication e, and this e into p by q, should be equal to p by q. Okay. So if this is the thing. What will what what is e then? What do you think e can be? It's one. 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 That's it. Hena. So uh, you can just take this particular thing and you can say okay since uh, since uh, uh, p by q cannot be zero, right? So I can take this p by q on this side, right? I can say e equal to p by q into q by p. Cancel out all of this. You'll get one. Simple, right? So this. See, the idea is that these operations, what I'm defining, this binary operation is uh, some sort of a, uh, uh, in some way, a function, right? It's taking two elements like this and spitting out something, right? 
what we are doing while while trying to solve this sort of problem is that we are we are defining this function in some sense. We are saying okay, this function basically it will take two elements, it will multiply and give you that uh, the result. That's the that's the idea of this of this uh, scalar multiplication in some sense, right? So that's the idea. Okay, so this is fine. Uh, then let's come to inverse. So what do you think the inverse would be? Any idea? P by Q multiplied by Q by P. I mean, inversing the equation. Right. Yes. So that's it. So uh, so. <laughs> Go back to the uh, the uh, definition of uh, uh, you know inverse. The idea is that I need to find some element, let's say b. Uh, you know, when I multiply this with this p by q, I should get the element e. E here is one. So therefore, simply yes. b, b is just q by p, which is just the inverse of the rational or uh, inverse of the element that we have, right? And the thing is, see, this will belong to this set q slash uh, zero mainly because a cannot be zero right because a has to be a, a, an element in this one by zero is not defined yes. right and which is not a we don't know what this is actually speaking it's it, 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 it uh, we don't even take it as a real number in some sense right so 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 so, so basically the idea is that because a is not zero one by a will always belong to this particular set and which is uh, what we have mentioned here, right okay uh, and the last thing is <laughs> Commutivity, which is again just a, a result of your uh, multiplication being commuted, right? Okay, so these are some some of the simpler examples that we, that we looked at. Um, so I will do one thing. Let me keep these two examples as sort of your um, you know thinking. Uh, uh, we'll discuss next uh, class. Uh, I just wanted to think about these two examples, right? So let's say I have a set of all matrices. Okay, so M is set of matrices of size m n right so this is m cross n and let's say we, we we say it's a real matrices set okay okay and i'm defining this plus as your normal matrix addition okay so i have this so what you need to go ahead and do basically as we've been discussing is you need to find out whether uh, the f first property is closure that is if i took if i take two elements of these matrix uh, of this set m do i get to get back uh, the element in m that is one and the second thing uh, is uh, you know associativity um, and uh, your third thing is commut commutiv commutivity all of these are very simple what i need you to do is solve for these two things one is your identity what will be the E element here, right? And what will be the A inverse here, right? So try to think about these these things mainly, and uh, you will be glad. You will you will you will see why uh, you know in matrix inverse is a very special case of what inverse means, right? I, I think you all have uh, seen A inverse and A inverse A is equal to I and all of that sort of a thing. Will will and and will will take a step back and try to understand wh why and where this exists. What what is difference between this inverse and this inverse? Is it the same? Not the same? Etc. Okay. So I, I just want to go go ahead and think about this one, and we'll discuss this in the next class for sure. This is one homework in some sense. Other homework is this one. Okay. So uh, uh, so, do you know what is the function composition? No, okay. So let's say I have a function f, which is let's say from some uh, you know um, uh, set s to um, I'll just do something else once again. Uh, let's say from x to some y, okay, and g is some function which goes from y to uh, z, okay. Some some sets, right? X and y are some sets. Y and z are some sets. So, a function composition is defined by this operation called circle, f circle g. Okay, so if I have two functions f and g, I can define an operation on the function, right, which is f circle g. Okay, so this is also a binary operation, right, because it's taking uh, two functions as input and it's giving you a function which is defined like this. 
okay uh, oh okay no sorry there's some notational issues one second we'll discuss about that later so let's say i'm defining something like g circle f mm, will this is, yeah correct g circle f okay what i do is uh, this function goes from um x to z and the way you define this um, and the way you define this uh, you know function is g circle f of some x okay is equal to g of f of x okay where x belongs to um, x set okay so uh, so what am i doing here right i'm taking two functions g and f i'm applying a operator called the composition operator okay on these two functions and it gives me a function in in return and that function is this the function is named to be g circle f that's the function this g circle f function is defined in this way i say okay it is g of f of x okay now uh, go ahead and think about this particular e example that is set of bijective functions from s to s okay so i hope you know what is bijective functions any idea anyone any any doubt there what is bijective function no sir please discuss sorry no sir i don't have any idea okay okay so a bijective function okay is a function which goes from let's say some set x to x for now we can just think of this right some set uh, it takes element from this set and puts it back to the same set in some sense and what we're saying here is this f function has to be on to and one one what on to means is that um okay you can use a different notation here Y, let's say on to means all elements of y are reachable in some sense right and one one means every element of y is mapped to one element in x okay okay so i i i'll i'll say that you know uh, go ahead and think about it a bit um otherwise what i can do is i, I can give I, i give a simple example of bijective function okay uh, and and one example of not bijective function so let's say if i define something like this f going from r to r okay and i say uh, f of x is x squared okay see what is happening here the range of f of x is what only positive numbers right because x square can, can, cannot be negative uh, is that clear yes it is huh. so the range is just positive numbers let's say i'll call it as r plus actually it's r plus union zero whatever right so what happens is uh, I, i'm not able to cover all the elements of this uh, y which is in this case the real number line so this is basically not a bijective function okay if uh, i choose um let's say r to r plus union 0 mm -hmm. then it is on to for sure right because i'm I, 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 I can i can always uh get some number r whose square if i take i will get this uh, you know element in uh, r plus union 0 right yeah. but uh, but it is not 1 1 why because square root of uh, i mean uh, so f of x let's say equal to x squared if i take the square root on 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 both the sides i can get the same result by taking neg a negative number and a positive number right so minus a and a will have the same result a squared right yes so one element of this a x of the, of the range is being mapped to two elements here so it's not one one okay now i'll define one more function okay i'll define one more function which is like this let's say r to r f of x equal to x cubed for example yeah this is i'm claiming a bijective function okay 
it can actually cover the whole real number line okay any number on the real number line i can i can actually uh, express as a as a cube of some other number and it is 1 1 right any two elements of this uh, of the of this r will not have the same element in the initial r your input r okay so this is the idea of budgetary functions what i want to think about is under this composition operation and under this bijective for the bijective functions is this particular set okay with this uh, uh, you know composition operation so i can let me call this set of budgetary functions as some script f right so is this script f comma circle is this a abelian group or not okay so think about it and again we'll discuss it in the next class uh, in detail okay okay so that's about um, you know uh, abelian groups so now we'll go to some a basic uh, one more idea called as fields okay so in fields the idea is that again similarly i have a set f but here i'm dealing with two binary operations okay and i and i name them plus and dot okay so that satisfies the following properties so let's say f and plus have to be an abelian group we just now did what abelian group is right so this operation plus with this f has to be an abelian group f and dot also has to be an abelian group that is also required these two are the two conditions and the third condition is that this dot is distributive over plus okay so uh, let's say if i if i take any elements f in f a b c this result that i get okay a dot b plus c should be equal to a dot b plus a dot c okay so if you see here uh, the idea is that this b plus c will actually be uh, an operation of this plus okay see what is happening here first i am doing plus on this b and c i get some element right that element will belong to f because f plus f plus is abelian group by definition then i'm taking that element in f and i'm applying dot operation with this a and that element okay so let's say this is some some e okay e will belong to f because f and plus is abelian then a dot e will also belong to some will also belong to f because f comma dot is also an abelian group okay same thing i'm doing here so i'm saying first i'll do a dot b a dot b will also belong to f let's say i'll call it some f uh, small f element right a dot c will also belong to f let me call this as some uh, g and then i'm adding so i'm doing the plus operation on these two elements in f okay and let's call that as some um, you know this this result to be some i or whatever right and a dot e to be some j so i'm saying that this j has to be equal to i for any a b c which belongs to this f if i take any of the elements in f this should be true okay that is the idea now see in the previous dis uh, uh, discussion we we spoke about this identity element right and we said e is identity element so what i'm doing is i'm just changing the notation because i have two abelian groups i need two symbols to to discuss about identity right so what i have, what i have, uh, what you have done is we have said okay uh, i will define i will i will notate i will i will say that okay the identity element in this particular group f plus i will uh, represent it with a symbol the symbol is zero okay so zero is the identity here and uh, in this particular group the identity element that symbol is one right that is the idea so in this, so what it means is um, any element if i take a in f a plus zero is zero plus a which is equal to a c plus is a uh, operation that we can define and same thing here if i take a dot one is equal to one dot a is equal to a this is the idea okay um a, any doubts till now anything uh, unclear yes sir sorry yes sir no doubt okay so we look at some example to drive home the point okay so first thing so uh, one example you can look at is this one right q is a set of all uh, rational numbers let's say um and then you have plus and then you have a dot okay so uh, and, and here the plus and dot here are your normal addition and multiplication okay so uh, is this a is this uh, you know uh, uh, set with these operations is this a field or not that's the question okay so what do you think will it be a field yes sir it can be it can be because we can we can do uh, for a rational number we can do a plus 0 and 
एंड जीरो प्लस ए इक्वल टू ए एंड ए इंटू वन एंड वन इंटू ए इक्वल टू ए आइडेंटिटी वैलिडी करेक्ट ट्रू सो 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 दैट्स बेसिकली ट्रू बट देर इज वन लिटिल कैवियट हियर see when you work with zeros in this case right what will happen for addition for for, for multiplication see because a dot is has to multiplication right so i have the identity that is true so I, uh, any any if i take any element uh, a which is a rational number which is a rational number so if i multiply a with 1 i will get a that is fine <laughs> uh yes. but but uh, what about inverses right so uh, 1 by a has to be the inverse in this case right because yes. i need a if a into b is equal to 1 then b has to be 1 by a right so this the, so yes. the caveat here is a, this, this this dot operation i mean in this case at least what will happen is uh, uh, your uh, zero will will, will 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 stop um, you know uh, uh, going through this uh, rules right So yes, hence, because you don't give infinite infinite which is not a part of the uh, which is not not a part of this uh, rational numbers all right okay good so this is uh, one idea uh, one an example and we are turning sort of short this uh, okay uh, and uh, and same thing so we will do one thing we will discuss this more in detail uh, and then you have this r plus uh, zero so, so r is basically your real numbers right so same ideas will apply here okay uh, mm -hmm. r if i take and then plus and zero plus and dot whatever um and then uh, think about what uh, this would mean right this is a, mm -hmm. a set of integers hai right? na so uh, where will this this cause an issue any any first uh, thought processes so so here what will happen is your um, identity element of your uh, dot operation is 1 right which is in this case the uh, uh, multiplication operation so what will happen is yeah. let's say i have a integer a right um when i do 1 by a that will not belong to the integer set i mean i mean it, it may not belong to the in integer set so hence uh, this is not a uh, field okay this is not a field so z plus dot is not a field okay clear anyway so so that's that's uh, this one and we'll we'll do one thing we'll discuss bit more in the next class uh, with the homework and stuff uh, okay so i i just want to cover this part and then we'll talk about a bit more uh, so what is the sub field okay so let's say i have i have this um, um idea that i take the subset okay of a field which is a field in itself So, for example, let's say uh, pre previously we just defined right. We said f plus dot is some field uh, definition, right? If I have some uh, you know set G, which is a subset of f, and I can say that G plus dot under the same operations, by the way, under the same operations, if it is also a field, right? Then we say that G is a subfield of uh, uh, this particular uh, field before. Okay, that's the idea. now in this uh, thing we have subset of uh, so so for, for example let's talk about this one right we have uh, this complex numbers right so complex numbers and addition if i take in uh, in in consideration hmm, right uh, complex numbers and addition so what will happen is your real numbers is actually a subset of this complex numbers uh, field right because um complex numbers of uh, uh, field uh, actually this will dot also actually here okay so uh, this dot for example so, so, so let's say i have this complex numbers field now um uh, we know that r is actually a proper uh, it, 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 it is a subset of uh, this c field right i mean a complex a set of complex numbers right which we know for a fact now what what we are saying is we are saying is r plus dot is also a field or not and it is a field so therefore we say that this r plus dot is actually a subfield of this uh, c plus dot okay um then uh, if you think about these two uh, of these two sort of operations 
वन इज योर जी प्लस कमा यू नो प्लस सो वट इज जी प्लस इज स्पेसिकली पॉजिटिव इंटीजर्स विल दिस बी अ सब फील्ड ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर्स और नॉट दैट्स वन क्वेश्चन दैट्स वन थिंग यू टू थिंक अबाउट एंड सेकेंड थिंग इज इज द सेट ऑफ रैशनल नंबर्स इज दिस अ सब फील्ड ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर्स ओके सो 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 या सो विल डिस्कस मोर इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास but uh, so just go ahead and think about it like will this be a sub field or not and um, and if it is so then you you, you need to be able to define all of the uh, uh, identities and your i uh, you know these uh, laws of uh, you know, distribution and whether do we have inverses and all of that the whole story you need to repeat for both the both the fields both the abelian groups okay is that clear yes okay um okay so uh, that is about the um, basics um i'm thinking should we start uh, at this basics okay uh, a- 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 any doubts till now you have all clear yes sir mm okay good um so okay so we'll do one thing we'll, i'll just int- introduce what vector spaces means and then we'll uh, you know go ahead and think about uh, i mean we will we'll, we'll discuss about in more details about examples of vector spaces and stuff okay uh so for a vector space what we do is we define uh this vector space using mainly four things okay one is you need a field f of some scalars okay scalars is some uh, you know uh, real numbers or you know you, you can define what scalars you need to use but some numbers pure numbers right so so, so this is a field f of scalars let's say f and then you have this set v of objects with, and these objects are called vectors okay hence the name vector space we'll see in 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 a, in a, in a while right so you have this set v and then uh, we have an operation called plus okay the symbol is plus and i say okay uh, that this operation v plus has to be abelian okay abelian we just uh, discussed just now right so v plus has to be abelian and the fourth uh, condition is that i have another operation called dot right such that i have this uh, i have this uh, i have these uh, properties fulfilled for this particular uh, dot right so what are the properties first thing is called identity so if i can find a scalar 1 which if i multi- if i do this operation dot on any element in this vector space v uh, in this set v let's say uh, v belongs to capital v here right so if i do uh, so if i take this one and multiply and and you know operate with dot on this if i get back my v then this is called identity of of this one okay so see this uh, field we all discussed just now this this field already has two identities right it has that plus identity called zero and one identity called the uh, identity of the uh, dot operation right this same identity i can use okay so if you remember this identity right so the the identity of the field uh, with this operation dot okay so that Uh, when i take and i multiply uh, when i operate on this uh, on this new operation called dot on v i should get back the same element v okay this is one second uh, thing is something called as compatibility here i am saying c1 c2 let's say are some two scalars c1 c2 which belong to let's say field f okay and uh, again v is belonging to capital v some element in this uh, set v right so if i multiply this c1 and c2 see this multiplication this particular operation is the operation on scalars remember this very clearly it become important uh, going forward okay so this c1 c2 is actually the uh, scalar multiplication sort of thing right uh, i mean uh, uh, the, the operation of a dot under this field f right this is purely an element in f okay that when i operate on this dot operation with this v should be equal to c1 dot c2 dot v now c2 dot v is another vector by the way right which belongs to this uh, uh, set v 
which are obtained by multiplying this, uh, I mean, uh, doing this dot operation with this scalar that is, uh, you know, your, uh, uh, which is in C field F and your uh, element in the vector space in, in the set V, right? So this is actually another another vector which is which belongs to let's say I call it V two which belongs to capital V, and I am again doing this same dot operation on on a on a scalar and the new vector which I have got that is V two. So this is again an, an element let's say in uh, the uh, uh, set V. So this operation and this operation should be equal for any C one C two in field F and any vector in uh, any V in capital V set. Okay. There is a second operation called compatibility, and then you have the uh, idea of distributive. Here, the here alpha and beta are two vectors. Again, alpha and beta belong to capital B, and C belongs to capital F. Um, here, what I'm saying is, I'll apply this operation, this plus operation which I defined just now, on these two vectors, right? So this operation is applied here. Okay, alpha plus beta. I got a vector. Let's say some vector v in set v, in set capital V, right? Uh, this c dot is the operation that, that I'm applying here. This operation I apply between the scalar c and the vector v. So I get another vector, right? Now here I have c dot alpha, which is again vector and scalar multiplication in some sense, and then I have this uh, beta vector again the same scalar multiplication this addition is between again two uh, vectors right because this is a vector let's say some v1 this is some vector v2 again i'm adding two vectors under this operation plus that i have defined here okay so this has to be true for all c for all alpha for all beta right for all for all yeah okay and the last operation is, is, is again something called as distributive, which is basically saying if I have two scalars, C1 and C2, this addition is the addition of scalars, which I which I have defined in this field F, that addition I have to do here. And then I do this dot operation on the vector. So this is some scalar C. This is some vector because I'm multiplying this scalar C with this vector. I'm getting another some vector V. This is again your normal vector, uh, uh, you know, vector dot, this, 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 this particular operation dot. Again, I have another operation like this V2 and I'm up and, and I'm adding two vectors here, which is again using this third operation, this third uh, uh, thing, the uh, operation plus mentioned here, right? So, so I have to see that these two vectors are always the same. See, in, in all of this, be very clear which operation is this plus operation, which operation is dot operation, which operation is the plus operation of the field F, right? And all of that. Be very clear on that because that will basically help you disambiguate exactly which operation is being performed where, okay? So, so under all of this, uh, uh, if all of these conditions hold, then we say that this V, set V, is a vector space over the field F, okay? This is... Uh, the definition of your uh, vector space okay so if i say that, that a vector v is a is a vector space over uh, this set v is a vector space over uh, field f what it means is i can i have these operations plus and dot which are such that all of these op all of these conditions are satisfied and this f is also a field over scalars which has its own conditions to be satisfied clear and we call this plus as vector addition and we call this dot as scalar multiplication Okay, so this uh, vector addition comma so this uh, vector addition on the set V has to be abelian, and the scalar multiplication with uh, V has to satisfy these properties. Okay, so this is uh, the definition of vector space. Okay, any doubts here? No, sir. Okay, good. Um, so we'll uh, try to understand you know, uh, some some examples on this vector space and uh, see exactly uh, you know uh, how uh, like what what is f what is v there what are the operations involved and stuff like that okay so let's say i i, I have a I, I define this tuple of real numbers so what is a tuple is is just basically a list okay so let's say i define something like um, let's say i have a1 to an are some real numbers okay and I define some uh, a, small a, with this tuple a1, a2, and so on up to an. Okay, this is some 
collection some some ordered list of uh, uh, some numbers right so this is called your um, a uh, this is your uh, i will define that this is a vector okay and i will say that this is a vector space over real numbers okay see we already discussed just now in, in the previous section that real numbers is already a field of, uh, is already a field right i can define plus and dot in such a way that this is a, this is a field right this is okay i have the plus and dot now what i need to uh, so so is this sufficient to uh, claim that this is a vector space obviously no right we need to prove some conditions on on this uh, this one yes. and and we need to find out what the operations of v are okay so th see this plus and dot were the field operations which is fine that is we are, we are, we are not worried about that anymore we know already it's a field and we are happy with it so let me define this plus that is acts on these two vectors right i need to define this operation i need to say what this operation is such that v plus is a billion okay so i will say that let's say i have um just choose alpha and beta okay so let's say alpha and beta are two vectors that means this alpha and beta i can write they are basically tuples of some real numbers okay so alpha and beta i define it in this way the, the, the vector addition in this way right so let's say if alpha is some alpha 1 alpha 2 and so on up to alpha n, and this beta 1 uh, sorry comma and so on until beta n i define the vector addition here as the addition of the individual components okay and so on alpha n to beta n. okay this is the way i am defining the vector addition and how do i define the scalar multiplication so let's say there is some uh, 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 element c which belongs to capital i mean this r right over in the field and dot alpha right because i the, i would define something like this right i would say the operation dot with some scalar and some vector so let's say i have this in this format now what this means is i'm i'm basically i need to define an operation which goes like this i'll say alpha 1 alpha 2 this is the definition of alpha right um definition of alpha now what i'll do is i'll define it in this way i'll say okay this is c alpha 1 c alpha 2 until c alpha n okay that is and so what is this basically this is just a normal uh, uh, you know uh, multiplication of two numbers this multiplication is this dot okay because this this, this between two two uh, real numbers right because alpha is, is also a real number alpha is a real number c is a real number so i'm actually doing this uh, field operation here right and then just you know doing them uh, uh, for for each of these elements and therefore defining in this way right now uh, now my claim is that with these two operations this uh, you know tuple of real numbers is a vector space over over the real numbers field okay so for that what you need to prove is you need to prove all of these operations v plus is abelian and stuff like that so uh, this vector space v comma the plus that are defined here is abelian right and the four properties of uh, scalar multiplication okay so we'll do one thing um i encourage you to, to you to try this out you know prove it rigorously prove it uh, exactly uh, like a theorem right don't assume any uh, anything other than what is being given here right and and see whether you you are able to go ahead and you know prove with these definitions mm -hmm. these particular pro properties of this particular field okay and so uh, yeah so, so go ahead and try it and we'll do the previous homeworks right um, and this part we'll discuss a bit more here uh and then we'll come back and do uh the ideas of the vector space remaining part of the vector space here okay so we'll close the you know the uh, uh, the uh, lecture for now any doubts you have until now no sir but it was my first time on like mathematics in so oh. well so i was not 100% able to okay
so, uh, so, 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 so I, I'll, I'll suggest Niranjan. You, uh, what I will say is, you know, just go ahead with the definitions. Okay, um, you know what, what has been mentioned here. Ideally speaking, these definitions are so powerful that you will be able to, uh, you know, uh, you, using just uh, these definitions, you, you, you can, you should be able to prove whether a given uh, set is a field or not, vector space or not, which is what the homeworks currently are. Uh, so, uh, so, so try it out and again, you know, we'll discuss the homeworks in detail the next class so that you know exactly how to solve these sort of questions. Again, this will help in your final evaluation or whatever. That, that we will discuss. I have no idea what to do for that, for that at least now. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you suggest some reference books for this uh, to follow? Because I, I'm basically from biotechnology background. So okay. some of the terms are difficult to follow. Uh, okay. Something I can understand, uh, but uh, some uh, some of them are field is very complex to understand. So can you suggest some reference books side by side to follow so that I, I can okay. understand better? Yeah. So I'll say you know go go with this uh, linear linear algebra Hoffman and Kunze book itself. I, I I'm just typing it out right now. Um, Kunze, huh. So if you see see it in the chat, right? So. Uh, Linear algebra by Huffman Kunze. Uh, these guys, uh, they uh, so whatever I am teaching now will be present in that uh, you know book as such. So I'll say you know just go through that, and uh, so, so so the best way to learn here would be to ask questions. If there is some some term that you feel is uh, a bit out of the world and you heard for the first time, I'll try my best to help you understand exactly what it means and. Um, you know uh, how you can uh, so probably relate it to your you know uh, daily sort of a thought process right so we'll uh, we can do that also once in a while right and see you know how to apply these concepts directly to your uh, field of work that you're doing yeah uh, does that help yeah. yes yes uh, along with the period put this material reference book also over there so that I can uh, take it from there and use it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'll do that. So in the in the course, uh, uh, the the model that we that you will be getting, I'll I'll do that also. I'll see. Uh, I'll get the PDF version of the book and and give it to you and, and upload it there. No, yeah. just at least mention the reference book uh, which you are following, so that we can get it from our library and yeah, sure, I can sure. follow. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Thank you. Okay, guys. Uh, good. So, uh, okay. So, uh, two things I have, I have to do. One thing is, you know, figure out the um, uh, link and all of that, uh, meeting link and stuff that I will do. And whatever lectures have been recorded, whatever is being recorded, and also whatever I have written, I'll make sure I put in a PDF format and put it on the uh, uh, course module uh, page. Okay. Okay, guys. See you next uh, Friday around 10 a.m. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. See you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.